Hello everyone and welcome back to the Silicon Nubian YouTube channel where we're all about things tech. Continuing on our series 10 minutes with Linux, today we're going to talk about a granddaddy distribution. Well, maybe not granddaddy, but something that's been around quite a while, been making waves for a while, and yet has gone under the radar for some, and really shouldn't. We're talking about PC Linux OS. Uh, the latest version, it's 2020.02, it came out in February of this year. And while PC Linux does have a number of different releases, we're going to look at the one that sports the KDE5 um, graphic user interface. As well, there are three editions. It gets a little complicated with PC Linux OS because we have a number of different editions, both official and not official. And we also have three different versions of every edition. Uh, there is the main edition, the mini edition, which is called uh, Dark Star, and the mega edition, which is called Magnum. Uh, the download size is very significantly. The mini version, Dark Star, still comes in at 1.3 gig. That goes to tell you, <laughs> PC Linux OS, they include a lot of software. Uh, the main edition is 2.2 gigs for a download, and the one we're looking at today is the mega version called Magnum, which comes in at a fat 3.8 gigs to download. That being said, let's start our 10 minutes with Linux. PC Linux OS has been out around for quite a while, and uh, it is a rolling release, which means they only release updated ISOs. There's no such thing really as a new version per se, like in Ubuntu will come out with a new version and you have to go through this process. But PC Linux OS, as long as you stay up to date, um, you should be good. And I love that about rolling releases. MX Linux, for example, uh, Arch-based, such as Manjaro, and whatnot. So let's talk a little bit about here. So this is the main screen post installation. Once again, we uh, update completely um, the OS after its installation so that we can present to you the most up-to-date um, uh, representation of it. Very stark desktop, but this can be changed quite easily. Right click and we have a lot of different choices here. Um, show K Runner, open with Dolphin. Dolphin is the default file manager by the way and after update the dolphin version is 19.12.3 so um, very good very 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 good file manager no complaints there and we can do a few other things of course we can configure our desktop we can change our wallpapers which I guess because in a virtual machine it's not showing things are really strange uh, we could select, a, we could change our mouse actions here. We can go to location, icons, and there is a filter function. If we go down to the bottom where we have our <coughs> our uh, bar here, the panel, uh, right-clicking on it brings up what we usually would expect uh, in terms of uh, options for the panel. If you move to the right, we notice that this panel compared to other Linux distributions can be quite busy and this is its default layout so it is quite busy. Uh, as you'll see PC Linux has a philosophy where you there are many roads to accomplish the same task. It may not be something that fits in with everyone but I just want to put that out there. So on the right side we have our notification um, widget. We have our K organizer, so that's a reminder daemon. We have a uh, update notifier, uh, net applet, of course, with the usual configure network connections and whatnot. And it tells us about our network connection. Uh, we have our um, clipboard manager. We can change the color, we can go to night colors, make it easier on the eyes. I create encrypted vaults. I guess that would be encrypted folders with files that you want to secure without having to encrypt your whole drive. Uh, we have our volume control and we can configure our volume control if we need to. And here we go. We have Bluetooth, which is a uh, part of it, which is great. Um, we have our uh, external devices, USB devices and whatnot. And KDE Connect, show notifications from your devices. Um, with KDE Connect and we have our typical um, time, we even have a timer here and calendar. It's not really that typical actually, it uh, looks a little bit more free to complete than others, but KDE 5 is probably the heaviest system, but we're going to check that out. Um, 
on the left side we have Synaptic File Manager and this is what PC Linux OS uses for updating its files. Not going to stay in here too long. Synaptic is Synaptic. Looks the same no matter where you go pretty much. So they've kept that and I will tell you that the update manager is very aggressive at getting your files if you have to. Now this is where I'm talking about where PC Linux has many roads to the same destination. We have two different sets of we have KDE system settings and we have the PC Linux system settings. Anyone who knows about Mandriva can remember this and many other distributions have used this and taken it further so it's very easy we have um, this will start our synaptic package manager we can configure sharing which I like this a lot get it on your network which is probably Windows potentially Mac configure even a web server from here configure FTP you can configure DHCP proxy configure time DNS here's where we can actually connect to um, our home network we have a network center and we can uh, change things in there. We uh, can remove our connection, for example, set up our DSL connection or share internet connection with other local machines, configure VPN, manage different network profiles, host definitions and whatnot. For hardware, we can browse sound, uh, graphical um, server uh, settings, uh, set up printers, and set up scanner. Um, network shares, we can create network shares, access network shares, uh, we can look at our local disk, manage our disk partitions, we can go to security tab where we set up our personal firewall, authentication tools, and we can um, manage our how our system boots and set up the boot system and whatnot. So let's continue. I think this is going to go over to 10 minutes, but <laughs> we're going to try to keep it down. Now if we go to the KDE system, there's a lot more, but there's a lot of duplication. KDE Connect is here, Power Manager Audio is here. Um, there's different things that are being duplicated. And you're going to find that a lot, potentially because we do have the Magnum version, the Mega. Uh, but it does create, uh, it could create confusion with some people, but with others, they might like it. Once again, Linux is great because one size doesn't have to fit all. So let's go into our... Um, into our program menu. I'm definitely not going to go through this comprehensively because as you'll see uh, PC Linux OS even in its basic edition ships with a lot of different software and in this mega edition it ships with basically the kitchen sinks in here as well. So we're gonna look at more applications which don't fit in one of these categories and you can see right away there's a lot it's it, it is a lot of stuff a lot of applications and we can see right now that we're using 520 megs or so of memory and that's but that's our memory and swap history swap we're using zero memory we're using not that much I'm not too sure about this because this is a very heavy OS and to tell me that it's using less uh, physical RAM than, for example, Linux Lite is something I'm uh, having issues wrapping my head around. If uh, you can uh, mention in the comments to tell me what do you think about that. Um, configuration, we have tons of configuration tools, development tools, editors, goodness gracious, do you need anything more? Education file tools, tons of different stuff. Uh, games, uh, not really a fan of these games that ship with an OS, but I am a gamer, but not in that regard. Graphics. On a lot of the applications that I see are applications that I myself am not familiar with, and others who've used uh, PC and Linux OS, the larger version, say the same thing. But, you know, fairly easy to add things to the desktop as well, but we'll get into that. With Internet, we can see that Firefox is the default web browser, and adding it to the desktop is so simple. Absolutely. Um, Office, it does ship with the ship sheep sorry with the full libra office suite and this is always great because a lot of us do need uh, an office suite a capable one and libra office is extremely capable as well it ships with everything else <laughs> a lot of these um, are basically uh, libra office can duplicate a lot of the functionality but they are there software center uh, we can get pc linux os 
and uh, these are applications that are built into I believe they're specific to PC Linux OS and this tells you the different versions that are available now I'm gonna go through this we can see the sizes we have the mate edition KDE 5 XFCE open box and TDE uh, Trinity of course there's many different I don't think all of these are official I think one or a few of them might actually be community driven but they're supported by the developers so that's pretty interesting if you want to get it even though you already have it um, LibreOffice Manager, Localization, Synaptic of course, VirtualBox, Guest Editions Installer, VirtualBox Manager, Sciences, Sound, pretty much every player that you would ever need to play any kind of sound or watch any video by the way is there. As we can see in video we have everything. VLC is here, we have well, a lot. <laughs> Let's just put it like that. And then we have Power and Session and we can sleep, hibernate, we can log out and whatnot. So that's what ships with it. Now let me talk about a few things about PC Linux with respect to its performance. Its performance in a virtual machine, even on a high-end machine that it's on, again the machine specs are an AMD 3900X, 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, performance is not stellar. Um, definitely you see a difference obviously compared to let's say MX Linux or things like Linux Lite. But, and there's my alarm, but that being said, said, on real hardware, it does work quite well. Now, I can tell the difference. I've had this running on an AM4, an AMD uh, Ryzen 1600X, and with 16 gigs of RAM, and I do notice a difference. It's not detrimental at all, it is a heavy system, that's why I'm a little bit skeptical about its RAM usage. Also, it's very KDE5 is a very complex system compared to um, XFCE or LXQT, for example. That being said, if you have the system that can run this well, and it doesn't mean you have to have the greatest, latest and greatest, once again, I am presenting it in a virtual machine. So, things as you can see before, <laughs> things don't always work as they should. Uh, but that being said, definitely worth a look. I personally would not use the Mega version. I like to have more control over what ships with it so I would go in and uninstall probably half of that stuff. I'd spend, take me days due to the the plethora of software that's included with this. I would download probably the mini version and start from there but that is just me. There are those out there who will watch this who will appreciate the fact that everything's been taken care of. They will poke and poke and poke around all the different applications and find those that they like. And that's the great thing about PC Linux. There is a big community out there. It is very well established. It works well and uh, I can't really say anything bad about it. It's a definite contender and particularly if you're coming from the Windows world it's a plus and a minus. The plus is it out of the box experience can be very fulfilling because everything is there that you need to do. The negative is there's too much there. Even in the smaller versions, there's a lot of software. And um, that's just me speaking again uh, what I like. Uh, the responsiveness is okay. Again, uh, in a virtual machine, I can tell that it's lagging a bit compared to a few of the others, but that being said, on real hardware, I've had nothing but good experiences with it. It is updated uh, quite regularly. They have a large community out there, and you can be productive immediately after installing this. So that's our quick look, uh, 10 Minutes with Linux. Hope you really enjoyed uh, our quick look, and hope you enjoy the series. Uh, tell other people about us, and uh, please, if you haven't already, subscribe. Uh, we have more coming up, and uh, not just Linux, we also have uh, computer builds, we have uh, hardware reviews, and a few other things. Once again, we're expanding the scope of this channel. I want to thank you very much for watching, and if PC Linux sounds like it's something you want to deal with or you want to try, just jump on over to DistroWatch or PCLinuxOS.com and get yourself a copy. So hope to see you again soon, everyone. Take care, and goodbye.